Hello, hello, ASMR nation. This is going to be a soft-spoken, am I overreacting? Reddit, subreddit, threads. Um, we had a lot of fun with the last one, so let's have equal to or more fun this time. Am I overreacting is like people, it's kind of like, am I the a-hole, but people want to ask the general public, you be the judge, I be the judge, Reddit be the judge of if they're overreacting or if there's something more to their scenarios. But before we get into it, you know the drill, you know the deal. We have to do some channel maintenance, some channel hygiene. So if you're new here, welcome to my nonsense. If you're old here, welcome back. Oh geez. If you're new here, please consider hitting subscribe. And if you're old here, Go double check, make sure you're subscribed, hit the like, if you like, leave a comment, it can be anything related to the video, it can just be a hello, a few emojis, whatever, as long as it's cool and respectful, hit the notification bell, as always, I will link my tip jars down yonder in the description box, no pressure whatsoever, but every dollar too helps, that is what allows me to continue to make content, 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 also, you are invited to my Patreon, I know, not everybody can come, but you can't say you weren't invited, now is the time, I've been posting a video every day for August, for the, fa like, every, I post every day. If you're on the FAMO tier, you get a video every day. And if you're on the OGs tier, you'd get a video every other day. And even regardless of that, aside from that, I post a lot over there. Okay, let's get to it. Am I overreacting for telling my husband he can't drive with our daughter anymore because of multiple road rage incidents? going off the the title I'm gonna say no it's probably time to pull your daughter out of the car but let's read it my husband has a huge anger problem but it intensifies when he is driving the first time is when I found out I was pregnant in 2020 he got into it with another guy who was blocking us at a gas station he didn't have the option to back out but instead continued to yell and flip off the other guy he ended up getting out of the car and punching the other guy's side mirror. He jumped back in, backed up, and drove off. He hit the other guy's mirror so hard his knuckles were bleeding. A couple days later, a cop showed up at our door, but he wasn't home at the time. Nothing came of it since it wasn't caught on camera at the gas station. Wow, lucky. Also, gas stations need to step up their cameras because that could have been any, anything could have happened. Next time was when our daughter was a few weeks old, so not long after. Um, we were on our way home from the grocery store when a truck was tailgating him. He started yelling and flipping him off. The truck switched lanes and got right up by us. The other guy was so mad that he swerved into us. At this point, I had to roll down my window and tell him a newborn was in the car and he drove off. Not just a newborn, me, sir. I had nothing to do with this. You both. The most recent incident was this Saturday. We were on the way to a party at a friend's house when a Jeep Wrangler cut us off. My husband started honking and the other driver started brake checking us. So my husband rolled down his window and started yelling and flipping him off. We were all in the lane to get on a freeway entrance. The entrance starts two lanes but merges into one. My husband, instead of going to the access road to the right to avoid the guy, tried to go around him and to the left. This is when the jeep swerved into us and blocked us up against the freeway medium. He hit hard enough to push out our side mirror and leave black scratches on my husband's white car. The jeep finally went ahead of us and both got on the freeway. My husband is yelling out of the window and telling the guy to pull over until we got a few exits down. As soon as we pulled over, he started yelling at me how I make him feel like the bad guy and never take his side. I still had to go to the party, but I left early. We're not going to a party. We're going to another kind of party called a divorce filing. I'm currently not take, talking and sleeping in separate bedrooms. I texted him the next morning that I'll be moving to a later shift at work so I'm able to drop off and pick off pick up my daughter at preschool. 
I also said I don't feel safe with him driving her anymore. He thinks that I blame him for everything. Everything. Blame me for everything. And told me to stop catastrophing everything. 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 Okay, here's the thing. I am not an angel. I've had road rage before. I've given the middle finger a number of times. I've honked a number of times. And here's the other weird thing about road issues is somebody will cut you off and, or is about to hit you. You need to honk. Like that's what the horn is for. It's an alarm system. And the person in the wrong often gets very angry. Like they don't take a second and this is what, this is where I am an angel. Somebody's honking at me. I'm it's not just rational. I'm going to take a second to be like, oh, it's, it's me. It's me. I'm the problem. It's me. What did I just do? And occasionally I did something, you know, very rarely, especially as you get older and older and you're just a good driver because you spend a lot of time on the road. But occasionally I did something and I'm like, my bad, my bad, my bad. Okay. Versus illogical, irrational people get very mad when they've messed up. And it can cause escalation, etc. But this guy's, this guy is yearning for escalation. Anger issues and road rage. This is an absolute dumpster fire. Why are you still with a man who is regularly and frequently putting your daughter's life in jeopardy? I was in your shoes. A man does that once. He will get a come to Jesus talk. He does it again and I am done. Why do you put your daughter at risk? What happens when a gangbanger follows him home? What happens if someone pulls a... You are underreacting. This is super dangerous. Every single time I have seen a road rage incident take place, I get the plate numbers and call the authorities. I've even been talking to 911 on my phone and recording the crazy with my husband's phone. Obviously, I am not the person driving. That would be reckless. People have died due to road rage. Wake up, protect your child. There's a whole TikTok um, rabbit hole of people that have lost loved ones to road rage. It's pretty terrifying, especially if you're in a, a state where batty shit tends to happen. Um, so even if road rage was okay 15 years ago, apparently nowadays awful stuff goes on just from little road tips. So I guess you just can't. Let alone this guy who's putting his wife's life in danger, his newborn's life in danger. Like, he sounds like a pretty awful partner to have. Somebody said, 100% agree with you, but she probably fears custody arrangements where he may have the child part-time and then she can't protect her. And that's, that's something to consider. She can bring it up in court. But as of right now, it's kind of only hearsay unless she can get that cop from a few incidents ago to talk to that person and you know maybe that person will show up in court and be a character witness somebody said she should have been recording these incidents proof he isn't safe around the kid well in the future she can but then you still have to risk your life just to get that proof have provisions in the custody agreement about him not driving the kid anywhere he cannot do drop-offs and pickups I know a wonderful woman who got proof of reckless driving stunts pulled by her ex. He was never in trouble with the law, but she had enough evidence that their custody agreement that says he could not operate a rig with a child in it. He can't pick up the kid. Someone else has to drive him if he shows up to get the kid. As the driver, she does not have to hand the child over. It took some serious fighting in court, but it got done. Uh, just have it be known that serious fighting in court translates to serious thousands of dollars in court okay it's worth it but it it might not even be worth it because a lot of times it's not courts are funny places over here um and just personal story time from this i had a a stepdad that was a road rager um and there was plenty of times he just left us kids in the car while he went off and handled business and we just sat there like hoping he came back uh, which he always did but one time he kind of didn't because 
I know I was already out of the house by now, but he got in like a road rage incident in Illinois and it was so bad that he left the state to avoid accountability, accountability for it. So I don't remember the details of it. Not a good guy. Okay. Am I overreacting? My boyfriend hasn't come home since Friday and it's now Sunday with an update. Um, so this is, I guess, the update. Maybe. I don't know. Let's just read the whole thing. Update. We have found him. Dear Redditors, let me start off with thanking each and every one of you for your concern, kind words, and advice. I didn't expect this to get as big as it did, and I'm a longtime lurker on the sub on my main profile, and it's not often I see this kind of response. When I posted yesterday morning, I was beside myself with worry, and I had already taken quite a few steps to find him, which included calling friends and family. Many people told me I was overreacting. Yeah, often friends and family of a shit person will tell you that. So sometimes asking the general public is the better option. And told me he was probably just having fun. Yes, at my expense. He's free to text me and say, hey, I'm out just having fun. Don't expect me ever again. But it didn't sit right with me, so when coming to Reddit, I was just hoping a few people would tell me I hadn't lost my mind. So it looks like she had called a hotel looking for him, because it says, when I called the hotel, they initially informed me that I couldn't, they couldn't give any information about guests due to privacy law in my country. The police weren't of any help either, telling me that I should contact them again if he hadn't come home by Tuesday morning. I spoke to the management of the festival, so he was at a festival could confirm he scanned his ticket at the entrance on Friday. However, they work with wristbands, so there's no way to check if my boyfriend also came in Saturday or Sunday. With the hotel, the festival, and the police being quite dismissive, I turned to Reddit. I didn't include all these details in my original post since I didn't want the post to get too long. I figured I could just add information by responding to all of you, and that worked fine until I got a hundred reactions, and then a thousand, and then five thousand is crazy to me. Honestly, I can't thank you enough. Your responses really helped me through this and confirmed that the chance of something bad having happened was way bigger than him just having fun. Ooh, maybe. Maybe her darkest thoughts that he wasn't just having fun were real. After calling the hotel again and pleading with the manager of the hotel for quite a while, they were able to inform me that there hadn't been a reservation under his name. I sent his picture to the hotel and they looked at the security footage around the time his phone showed up there. Though they couldn't inform us of the results, they did promise to keep footage on file in case the police would need it later on. I contacted the police again with this information and while they were still hesitant to investigate further, they did get the hotel a call to request the footage of that Friday night. A little later, they called me back saying that my boyfriend hadn't been on any of the cameras all weekend, therefore they could rule out that he hadn't been there at all. Because this phone clearly showed location being there, and I had screenshots to prove it, the police realized that something indeed wasn't right and promised me they'd look into it straight away. Okay, so his phone was there, right? That's all we know is that his phone was there. Me and one of our mutual friends decided to start driving towards the festival site, which was about four hour drive. We knew we wouldn't be able to get in since we didn't have tickets. And even if we did, There'd be no way to find him and a crowd of over 65,000 people. But at least we'd be close by if we received any news. We could ask around if anyone had recognized his picture. Before we reached the site, I received another call from the police. My boyfriend had been hospitalized since Saturday morning and had been found in the ditches of the parking lot festival around 3 a.m. I wonder, did they call the hospitals? Always check hospitals check with the police, check with, unfortunately, like, morgues, um, hotels, she did that, friends and family, uh, doesn't sound like he was being nefarious, it sounds like somebody really hurt him, um, together with a few other people who had been at the festival, and all of them had been severely beaten, and without any of their belongings, Oh, so this is actually going to be a good clue that whoever had the phone has more info. Because that phone was still pinging and somebody had taken it. 
The hospital found traces of the same drug in each of their systems, which leads the police to suspect that they had been preyed upon and drugged by groups of people in search of easy targets. People who were alone. Apparently, it usually takes one to two days to identify an unconscious person without any form of ID on them, which is why I didn't hear anything either. The police are investigating further and will let us know when they found out who's responsible. We already confirmed that we want to press charges. This is terrifying. Okay, my apologies. This guy is probably a good dude that was just trying to have a good Friday night at a festival. Um, my boyfriend is okay now and he's expected to make a smooth recovery. He broke his collarbone and his wrist. He's covered in bruises and cuts and has a light concussion. He came by very late Sunday night, unfortunately, or luckily. He doesn't have any memories of the incident. Yeah, I don't even know if that's a good thing or a bad thing, you know? You can't testify without a memory. But it might protect him from some continuing trauma. I'm feeling so relieved and happy that we found him and he's safe, yet so incredibly angry at the people who did this to him and the others that had been found. You always hear horror stories about things like this, but you never expect it can happen to you, and I'm sorry I didn't update earlier. As you might imagine, it wasn't the first thing on my mind the last 24 hours. Here's a good comment. So when initially contacting the police, they didn't immediately think of this group of unidentified, unconscious, drugged individuals whom they found. They just said, call back Tuesday. And I get that they're saying it's a four hour drive, right? They're saying it's a four hour drive to this festival. But I still think that the call warrants maybe just a quick look up on the computer to see if there was an incident at the festival maybe. I believe the police might be in different areas, as she previously said she had to take a train a bit away from home, so maybe communication between departments was not great. Somebody said, the first posts were believable, but this one is ringing BS alarms. So many of these start with a solid premise and then go off the rails when the writer can't resist an exaggerated theatrical ending. So somebody's saying she's making this all up. One person drugged, beaten, and robbed, believable enough. A bunch of people drugged, beaten, and robbed, also plausible. A bunch of people attacked and robbed, I could buy that too. A mass drugging, planning, prep, organization, and a mass assault. Serious enough to leave broken bones. Plus one other thing being serious enough to leave the victims. Unconscious, pick a lane. This is the sort of thing that would be in the news if true. Two days tops, and if there isn't a storyline, 100% fake so maybe it's maybe uh, who knows you never know it's reddit you know i don't know okay here's a good one gotta do one more am i overreacting my wife slept with three men saying we were done and she won't acknowledge wrongdoing I, 32 male, wife, 32 female, are going through a rough patch. We're married for five years with two kids. We were separated and she confessed that she, she did it to try to get me to change and see stuff I was doing wrong. So did she do it before? I don't know. While separated, we have tried numerous times, but each time ends with her leaving because she gets upset at something, says or were, or says we're done each time. After each time she dates someone new and sleeps with them 100% of the time has been on the first date. Then after a couple weeks she's done with them. She has come back to me every time because I'm still there, married, love her, don't want to be with anybody else intimately. After the second time I submitted divorce papers and the date is rapidly approaching. And since that time she has broken up with me and come back again four or five times. Stop cut letting her come back. She needs to go sort her life out. And so do you. She refuses to acknowledge this is cheating or wrong, though she does admit she can see how she's doing it to try to get over me. She also wants to try and find someone she can start dating immediately. Anyways, huge red flag for me and currently we're trying we're back trying with the necessity of therapy in our future if we try again after the divorce, but try again after a divorce why is that even on your mind either go through with it or get therapy now um 
I need to acknowledge wrongdoing if I want to be serious about her in the future. It's been a confusing time for me, and I have definitely been on the receiving end of her saying things like, it's my way or no way. When she comes back, I'm sad about what she did, and she doesn't want to take accountability for what she did because she always says that we are done. And I think a part of me is just trying to believe it's because I hear it so much from her and I'm just looking for some un unbiased third person perspective to get me straight. Thanks guys. It would, if she wouldn't have to acknowledge any wrongdoing unless she was still toying with you. It should be none of your business, but she keeps coming back. Uh oh, here comes my kid. All right. Gotta get going. Um, but uh, the first comment is what did I just read? Leave bro. Leave and don't look back. I'm going to have to agree. All right. If you watch this all the way to the end, thank you very much. I hope you have a good rest of your day, evening, good night, sleep, and I will see y'all.